Right, hello, welcome to another episode of this Double Chinwag podcast with Lauren and me. Hello, Lauren. Hello. All right. Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Good. How's your month been? It's been a month since we've done <laughs> a podcast, apparently. It has. Um, looking when I was looking over on YouTube, um, it appears that we have. This is our ninth episode in eight months. <laughs> well, that's not quite the one a week we envisaged so, so far, is it? Yeah. Well done, us. Yeah. It's it's really good. Maybe if people started paying us for this shit, then we might feel a bit more motivated. <laughs> I was thinking, actually, just before you tell us how your month has been. Yeah. You know, you do like your subscriptions on TikTok, mm-hmm. and it's like three quid a month, but TikTok and the App Store take like two pounds of that. Yeah. Uh, why don't we just do a GoFundMe and people just can just go and pay a pound if they feel like it? Because they've already given us money for our cruise, haven't they? Yeah, no, but it's not enough, is it? <laughs> so He's I'm just, just thinking about doing a GoFundMe and saying, don't don't subscribe to me, just go and donate a pound if you feel like it. For for anyone um, who is wondering why Andrew is quite so brusque at the moment, uh, you've just woke up, haven't you? Yeah. Have yeah. you dreamt this GoFundMe or something? No, I thought about it the other day. Uh, it's an awful idea. Oh. Uh. Well, yeah. how, how else am I supposed to get them to give me money? Um, you could pimp yourself out. Well, not, I'll be owing them, won't I? <laughs> so, anyway, it's a bad idea, right? Okay, well, how's your month been then? The month has been okay. I have been going back into the office, although I did fall. Mm. Yeah, um, in the car park. And I fell so hard that it wasn't even my knees that stopped me from falling. No one usually put your hands out. Yeah. To stop. No, the first thing that hit the floor was my shoulder. Oh, right. Lovely. Yeah, so I I really went to town on it. And then the other night, and I've not told you yet, because, you know, I didn't want to try and garner too much sympathy, but I fell again. Oh, right. So why, why are you such a, a <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> you can't say that. I don't... Well, I just... I, I woke up, like, early on needing a wee, and I think I must have just been a little bit dazed. I had a little bit of cramp. And, um, and yeah, I fell over and hurt my hand. But annoyingly, yet again, I've got the tiniest scratch on. Oh, so there's no actual proof? No, it really winds me up. Did you fall over in the house? Yeah. Well, how did you manage that? There isn't enough room to fall over in your house. enough. I got out of bed, you know, like chest of drawers, you know, where you've got that one drawer. Chest of drawers, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I fell into that. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite dramatic. So you didn't actually topple over, like... You were still on your feet, you just tripped into it. I was barely on my feet and everything on the chest of drawers toppled over. Mm. So... Well, I hope all my stuff that's secreted away inside is all right. There's a a very small bottle of Blue de Chanel in there. I hope that's not been damaged. Is there? Mm. Oh, um, yeah. And your pyjamas have been washed as well. Oh, lovely, thank you. You're welcome. You left them in the drawer again. I know, well, I thought it's a waste of time. You know, I asked you once, and I thought I won't push it because I know what you like. For just you put know. them in the washing basket. Well, I don't It'll know which. You've washed. got about five washing baskets. I don't know which one's the active one. <laughs> the one nearest the door. Right. This is this is something that we don't have to have a discussion. Yeah. So we're just catching up. Mm. But less about me. How has your week been? Months, really. Well, I don't know really. What What were you gonna? What did you say out to tell people? Oh yeah, I went to Red Car to get your cabinet, didn't I? You Proof did. of which is on my TikTok at yes. Mr. Lauren. Yeah, so that was that was interesting. But both Scotch Dave and I, he's forty two, I'm forty one, I've said we're just getting too old for this now. Whereas in our youth we'd just yeah. drive like one night at ten o'clock on a work night we just decided we were gonna to drive to London just on a whim and we both had work the next day and we'd have been been at work that day, so we were tired, but we so we just drove to London. At ten o'clock at night, and now we can't even drive to the to the northeast without saying you're making this is it just too much. You're making it sound like you're in your seventies. You know, but it's it's tiring. You know, I mean, I do two thousand miles a week in a truck to start with, and then on my days off, I'm driving another four hundred miles for you. You offered. I know I did, but you caught me unawares. <laughs> I didn't have time to think of a suitable excuse. No, I didn't ask you. You offered. No, you sent me a message and said, I need this. 
Well, what am I supposed to say? What am I, what am I supposed to do? Just send a shrugging shoulders emoji? <laughs> That's what I'm going to be expecting next time. Yeah, well, just leave it until 2025 before you ask yeah. me to do anything. Yeah, I, I can only do it. I can. I know that I can only do it a handful of times. So yeah, yeah. Um, in in the whole of our lives, once okay. a year at the most. Once a year. Okay, that's fine. You know. I'll accept that. And by the by the time, right, that I'd insured myself on his camper van, we'd put the diesel in, I'd paid for breakfast and lunch and and all that and p- the cabinet, we may, you might as well have just gone to IKEA. Uh, yeah, once I totaled it all up. Yeah, it was um Save me the bother. Yeah. So, oh well. Uh, yeah, never but, mind. Uh, yeah, so um, and I noticed in the news today, actually, just as I was flicking through on the lavatory when I got up, that uh, two Just Stop Oil protesters have been sent to prison. Have they? Today, yeah. Well, what they did a couple of years ago, they went into the National Gallery and they threw tomato soup over the Perspex frame that protects uh, sunflowers by Van Gogh. Do you know that painting? Yeah. Sunflowers in a vase. Well, of course, they don't just have them on display. They have them behind a glass case. So they can't be damaged and stuff. Anyway, they've been sentenced, these two protesters, for throwing soup at a glass case, behind which is a very famous and expensive painting. They've been sentenced to two years in prison each. I mean, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? They've really fucked up there, because what they should have done was shared photos on WhatsApp of some kiddie fiddling, and then they'd they'd have got a suspended sentence, like Hugh Edwards. It's awful. I mean, I'm laughing, but... Which bit it, you're laughing at, the painting or the kitty fiddling? <laughs> no, I, I just, it's just, I can't believe with Hugh Edwards, that's all he got. I, know. I really can't. It's a disgrace. Apparently that's all people in that situation get, is usually a suspended sentence in those cases, which is yeah, just ridiculous. It really is. I mean, me and you don't really have um, the same opinions when it comes to the just oil, you know, things. I know that you're all for it, aren't you? I am, yeah, because in 40 years' time, when your house is underwater, you're going to think, oh, well, maybe they were right. Yeah, whereas I just think, well, I just think not only are they wasting the time, but they're just getting in our way. Well, um, they really they, know, they piss me off. Listen, if the suffragettes were wasting the time and just getting in everybody's way, you wouldn't be able to vote at the general election, would you? It's probably their fault. I've got to go to fucking work Monday to Friday. So. Well, it might be. Anyway, the best news is that yep. was this morning at 2.30 this afternoon... Three more protesters went back into the National Gallery and threw soup all over it again. Oh my god! So excellent. That's really good. I was watching. I was watching some sort of documentary on Hugh Edwards the other day, and I just, I can't believe that that's all he got for everything that he did. Mm-hmm. I, I I really can't. What the fuck is happening in this I don't world? Know. I I can't believe the people. There are some people that I I respect media figures that originally, when he was exposed for giving this vulnerable drug addict £35,000 over two years for naked pictures, that still defended him, despite that disgusting behaviour. And the the problem is, it's never just that thing. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they've been really unlucky and the one really bad thing they've done they've been caught out at. It's like Schofield, who we'll talk about in a minute. He's, He's not just done one bad thing and it's all come out. If they're behaving like that, you've got to expect that there's other disgusting behaviour as well. The thing is, though, is that you're expecting the people to call him out that are probably doing stuff that's just as bad. Well, I don't know. know. I don't think James O'Brien and John Sopel on LBC are doing things just as bad. Well, they're just like respected journalists on the radio. Yeah, but can it be... Is it just as bad to know that it's happening and say nothing? Well, it probably is, yeah, but I don't think they knew it was happening. But at the time, they said, oh, well, because when it when it came out, Hugh Edwards' wife said it was him and said, oh, he's terribly mentally unwell and he's in a hospital and, and you know, trying to garner sympathy for him. Well, yeah. he's only mentally unwell because he's been caught out. He wasn't yes. mentally unwell when he was doing whatever depravity he was he was doing. But I just Very thought, you can't... You can't defend him because this is this will just be the tip of the iceberg. It's very unlikely this is the only thing he's done wrong in that department. So I was very surprised when people defended him. And then since then, some of them have been back out and said, oh, well, I did say if he's done anything illegal, then it's not the same, you know, bloody blah. And some people have just said nothing. So you have to wonder what's going on with people if it is a wider yeah. problem, as you say, if everyone's at it. 
Well, it's. I, I think it's. Obvi- I think everyone's got some sort of scandal or shit over somebody else. Over that, the the majority of the association on the BBC, whatever it is. So, I think a lot of times it's a case of well, I'm saying nothing because I don't want to get outed for whatever I've been up to. So just it just goes know. to show you that you you know money can get you out of shit, can't it? Clearly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you've got you money, know. then you then you're laughing, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And Schofield is back on the telly next week. I uh, so I hear. Are we watching it? I don't know, to be honest, because I, part of me would like to, to watch it so I can shout at the telly that he's a cunt. Yeah. Because he obviously is. And I notice in the trailer, again, he's he's brought out that word, unwise. Now, if you remember at the time, the big statement was, the big feel sorry for me, but I've not really done anything wrong statement was, what I've done was unwise, but not illegal. Okay, so that was his statement. This trailer for this Channel 5 programme where he's on a desert island, the first thing he says is, I know what I did was unwise, but should I be punished for the rest of my life for it? Should it be a career ender? And it just smacks to me that he still hasn't grasped how disgusting he is because he's still insisting that I'm using that word unwise, which doesn't mean anything, does it? Yeah. You, You wouldn't describe cheating on your wife for however many years not telling her that you were gay for however many years, doing that to your two children for however many years, taking advantage of younger people that are working on your show when you're in a position of power for however many years, making everybody lie, including Holly Willoughby, the hard-faced cow, for however many years. You wouldn't call all of that unwise. No, but when you put it into perspective of people like Hugh Edwards... Well, yeah, it's not the same as that, but, and I'm not saying... I was about to say, well, we don't know what else he's done, which is a bit ridiculous, really, because then I'm accusing him of being a paedophile or something, yeah, which I'm yeah. not. But I know that that lad wasn't the only one. I know that as a, a, a former minor celebrity. You know. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Sorry, you, you put me off then. Sorry, yeah. For, well, all right, former minor local celebrity in very specific parts <laughs> of, of Merseyside and Lancashire. Right? Yeah. Even I know what, what else he's been up to. It's not the same as Hugh Edwards, but he's still an awful, awful human it's, being. It's and not, he's no. still has no idea, absolutely no remorse, no idea that he's done anything wrong. He's very defensive about it. And so I think we should just watch it so I can just throw stuff at the telly. I think there's a whole thing, um, especially well, especially on TikTok. I'm not really, I don't really do any other social media, but there just seems to be a massive fascination at the moment with calling other people a paedophile mm. and stuff. And I, I just, I feel like it's lost its weight a lot. You know, to be called that is the worst of the worst. Let's face it. And the problem is, is because it's lost its weight now. When we were discussing people like Hugh Edwards, who is, you know, a paedophile. In the same light like, sentences as we're discussing uh, Philip Schofield, who, to our knowledge, has not been proven to to do anything like that. No, he's been he's been unwise. But the, I've just got a massive issue at the moment with just just this term paedophile being just thrown around everywhere because it effectively what we're doing now is we're sort of we're categorising these people together, and I just I think it's I think it's so dangerous to be doing that. Not just us, but I mean, as society mm. and the media and everything, social media. I've seen all the memes and everything. I saw one this morning for, for Philip Schofield, and it, and it mentioned it was like one of these AI things, you know, where they, they just took his voice mm. and like ad libbed over um, over the top of this documentary uh, trailer that he's doing. And you know, they they were mentioning underage boys in that, and it's mm. like, well, we're just throwing it out too quickly, too easily, because now, like I say, there's no weight behind it whatsoever. People are calling someone a paedophile and nonce all the time on TikTok, and it's just it's just purely disgusting. We need we now we, we've got to the point where we need another word for it. Um, yeah. So anyway, it will be interesting to hear, but uh, the, uh, the, what Schofield's going to say. But I think it'll just be a load of selfish nonsense. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a lot of me. self-pity, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't really do anything wrong. You know, he's leaving out the fact, as I say, that he's been cheating on his wife, etc., yes. etc. So I'm glad Holly Willoughby's kind of uh, not been seen for a while, though. Well, she's, I'm sure she, she's filming something else for Netflix with Bear Grylls. Oh, is she? Well, he's another one that's, yeah. that's that's been caught out as a bit of a twat, isn't he? Yeah. Because he's been staying in hotels when he's been pretending he's camping out. So they probably, probably well match those two. Yeah, but I think it's going to be some sort of I'm a celebrity, 
style sort of thing uh, mm-hmm. where they're doing different tasks and and all that sort of stuff like daredevil like on the the edge of that so mm. it will be it will be interesting to see that as well will it? Um, and she's moved house yeah i saw it in the <laughs> i saw it in the in the mail i know you hate on there but yeah I saw in there that she's moved house as well, so... Oh, well, I mean, it's all right for some. She's obviously not struggling, unless she's downsizing, of course. Well, she's got she's got this um, she's got this company called Wild Moon or something like that, where it's like, yeah. you know, like Gwyneth Paltrow-style, you know, uh, overpriced candles, candles. that smell like your fanny and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. like £60 for a candle, a bit of jewellery, that sort of thing. Mm. But she's, she's no longer got the range with Marks and Spencer's. Whether she stopped it or they stopped it, I don't know, but she hasn't got that anymore. Obviously, she's not getting the TV money that she was getting from ITV, or maybe she is, like, I don't know. Well, she'll be getting paid till the end of her contract, yeah. Yeah, so maybe she is downs- he- he downsizing, Holly. He's mm. getting... <laughs> maybe she is, I don't know. I'm going to go fund me. <laughs> I know the house you she used to live in uh, had a turret on top of it, so it was a fairly big affair. Yeah. I've I noticed, I've seen on social media, a lot of people have been posting pictures and videos of where she lives lately. Uh, Are they? Yeah, they were doing, so maybe that's a reason why she's moved, because everybody knows yeah. where she lives. And she had that scare, didn't she, with that freak, so yeah. Oh yeah, there was that big fat fella thing. that was planning to kidnap her, yeah. laughably. I don't believe any of that would have happened. He was an absolute fucking useless nonce well this that, exactly that what the hell's he gonna do you know, know what i mean yeah he was just a sad fantasist wasn't he and if i was gonna do that it wouldn't be over holly willoughby let me tell you at least pick somebody decent like kelly brook or that yeah. one out of eastenders <laughs> which one i don't know i've just made that that bit up i don't know Pat butcher there aren't yeah there aren't really any celebrities that i you know i i'm enamored with to be honest. Uh, hello? No, you're not a celebrity. Listen, if if you're laughing at me when I was a very minor local celebrity in very specific yeah. parts of Merseyside and Lancashire, then yeah. I'm not I'm not having it that you're a celebrity. Well, I'm, I'm, well, no, but I'm the most famous person that you kiss currently. Uh, yes, that's fine, but I mean, that's a very specific <laughs> group. I thought you were going to say I'm the most famous person that you know, and that's obviously not true. No, because I have my celebrity and... acquaintances, don't I? No, you know, don't, so. but don't give the ick, yeah, or the you know. pictures up, yeah. yeah. Now, talking about dead people, there's a new documentary about Nicola Bully coming out as well. Remember Is her, there? the lady yeah. in the lake? Yeah. Pretty much. Now, she lives, uh, well, she did live and died in a place kind of, the which is right in between where we live, isn't it? Yeah, I go to St Michael's a lot. Yeah, we drive through it, don't we, and stuff like that. So yeah. I thought that might be interesting because her husband's on there giving it the woe is me uh, no, because no. of all the grief he got over it because people I were thought, accusing him of shagging her sister and all kinds, weren't they? I thought, I thought the grief that he got was absolutely fucking vile. I really do. And you had all of these people on TikTok and social media thinking that the Miss Marple trying to work stuff out. I think that anybody, if you, if you are listening to this... And you did that, and you started debating, and you started, you know, pointing the finger and accusing people. Then I think you are fucking vile, and you need to get alive. I that, thought that thanks was for alienating, uh, alienating our listeners. There, I don't. None think of your listeners will have will have done. That. I don't know. I don't think they would have done. I really don't think. I think it was just absolutely disgusting. Imagine if I went missing, and they all started accusing you, pub- like publicly, trying to shame you, embarrass you, vilify you. And you're just trying to deal with the fact that your partner's gone. Mm. To be I fair, thought, though, I thought it was disgusting. To be fair, I would, I would probably have to think. Did I, did I dispose of a body somewhere? It, it's just people were coming up with. It's. Do you know what? I can't stand. It's an. It, it's a strong hate, actually. Conspiracy theorists. Mm. Can't, they've got too much fucking time on their hands. I can't stand them. Well, that's Nothing, true. Yeah. It, 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 they just. Oh God, they just. They twist my tits. They really do. Mm, they don't believe anything. And then, but I'm a sheep, and oh, they're all telling me to wake up. And wait, fuck off. Yeah, uh, just well, most of them are thick the and yeah. sad and lonely. This is it. They say that they can't, we can't think for ourselves. But you're just listening to fucking Tommy Robinson or whoever else it is mm-hmm. who's telling you to think. You know what to think. Yeah, they've not got an individual thought between them. No, that's very true. Well, it's you know, I suppose it's it's interesting. I suppose it's fascinating. 
it, it kind of was it was intriguing to me as it was kind of on our doorstep what had happened because it was a, a, a yeah. bit of a mystery wasn't it so there is that facet to it and there wasn't there some woman with like a farm shop or something nearby and there was some whole thing over that where she wasn't she was kind of holding information back at the time or something or so it was said so there was all that mystery but i can't remember now because i've got the conspiracy theories mixed up with and this is what the, actually this is the problem happened. don't forget as well they they also had people that were traveling for hours to go and look for her mm. stamping over whatever evidence there was or anything like that stampling. they made that yeah is that a word no it is now whatever yeah stamping yeah <laughs> over whatever evidence that was there they hindered that investigation so much mm. they were and also the social media pressure that was on there as well and this is I, I, don't get me wrong i love social media a lot of the time and you know it it, it pays me greatly you know some months yeah not but, lately not lately <laughs> not lately I, I, sometimes this is just the really shitty side of it it really is it's like everyone's got an opinion and, you know, I understand that, you know, everyone says, oh, it's freedom of speech, right? wrong fucking country for a start. We don't mm. say that over here. But it's it's just too many people with a low IQ, just just sheer stupidity, mm. just coming out with all sorts of shit, usually for attention, just, what am I trying to say here? Well, it, it makes them feel important, these idiots, doesn't it? Yeah. Because 30 years ago, 20 years ago even, these things didn't exist, and then the internet came along, and it started off with like message boards and forums and stuff where yeah. people could type their opinion and they could see it on and there it was forever yeah and they could see it and other people would read it and i think it gave people a sense of importance all of a sudden like they were broadcasting in a way on the radio or the television or something they were broadcasting on the internet all of a sudden their thick uninformed opinion which usually would have been kept to themselves or spoken between the mates in the pub or over the garden you know, fence or whatever. Yeah, all of a sudden it gained some kind of importance because there it was on a screen for everyone to see. Yeah, and this is the problem with it now. Now every, everyone's always had an opinion, and that's fine. But why do we always have to hear them? Yes. Why can't we just Look listen at- to intelligent people's opinions like we used to? <laughs> Look what happened with I don't I don't know how much you were on TikTok when Jay Slater went missing and there was actually I, I know of at least one person um one man that went out there and would live stream him walking around looking for him mm. this man earned so much money yeah. from making out that he was looking for Jay Slater he doesn't know this boy He's never heard of him before in his life, but yet he got a flight over there, or maybe he lived over there, whatever it mm. was, and he was live streaming it. And when you look at, when you can, like, say, you have a look now, I'm I'm chronically on TikTok, we know this, but the, the live streams that we've seen at the moment have been horrendous. We've got people self-harming on a live, mm. um, or, well, it appears to be self-harming, but some people are saying that they're just, it's all fake and, you know, they're picking scabs and what have you. Mm. We've got people getting visited from the ambulance service because the people watching it will call the ambulance service calling the police we've got people inviting strangers into their house literally strangers into their house Mm. and putting them in front of a camera and trying to have conversations and getting drunk together a person that they met at a bus stop it's just it it's just ridiculous Mm. it's so ridiculous there's a lot of people being caught up in the moment because um at the moment on their live streams because they're saying stuff they're forgetting the camera is there and saying stuff that they really shouldn't be saying the the worst of the worst racist things that can be said you know yeah exactly yet again i have to say with this as well because i'm I'm not gonna like name and shame and stuff like that everyone will know who i'm talking about but there's one thing making a mistake but why are these why are these white people accepting the apology i have to say this why are white people turning around saying it's okay that you said something racist? We forgive you. It's not your place. No. So stop accepting forgiveness. But Let's, why is you know. anybody taking any notice of this? I mean, for a start, I mean, who wants to see the great unwashed on the television? Nobody wants to see that, right? Uh, social media is the worst thing ever. I would. I don't even know why I'm on TikTok to be honest. <laughs> it's the news because it irritates Do you remember me. Remember Big Brother? Yeah, like, but Big, Big nobody, Brother. I, and I don't want to see fucking commoners on the television i want to see polished <laughs> well-spoken television and radio presenters i don't want to see people fucking normal people with gray teeth 
and hey. bad skin on my fucking screen. That's it's awful. Me. Yeah, I don't know why your teeth aren't that bad. Right. Oh, thanks. But listen, but yeah, but why is anybody so some arsehole goes on and says something racist? Everyone's getting all upset about it, and then everyone's getting upset about an apology. But we, nobody knows who these people are. They're insignificant. Why is everyone th- getting upset about any of it? Why does I anyone think care? Lot, I think a lot of the time, um, especially with social media, I think that when we all went into lockdown, that's when TikTok went massive. And I think for a lot of people, including myself here, it was it it was a quiet house. It was lonely, and you weren't seeing anybody. So when people went on a live, I'd, I'd you know I'd just have it on in the background while I'm doing the washing. I can or understand like that. that. Yeah, you know. And I think for a lot of people, they just haven't got out of that habit for whatever reason. And I personally, I'm never going to judge those people because. Well, I am. No, well, I'm not because I still. I'm, I'm alone during the day a lot, aren't I, at home and stuff, and I will have people's live on. If there's any burglars um, or rapists listening, yeah, just whip round a bit lively, yeah. <laughs> She's it's all on her own during the day. But Door's I, usually I, unlocked, so, you know. I, I will have, you know, somebody's live on, and for a lot of people who can't go out because of mental health issues or restrictions with the um, physical disabilities, whatever it is, I understand, but I also understand the importance of um, these parasocial relationships that can be that can be had i heard that it's bollocks no well it is bollocks do you know if somebody said to me andrew we don't want to listen to your shitty podcast right we don't want to watch your hilarious videos with lauren anymore i'd say that's fine you've done me a fucking favor right i would delete all fucking trace of it it'd no, be fucking amazing I'm... because we, we, nobody who, who, why are people listening to us we're fucking nobody why does anyone give a shit? Go out there and get on with your own fucking lives. You can't say that. But you, what you put, you, what you deem is important to somebody or not important. Nobody to thinks what I do or say is important. It might be no. mildly funny for about five seconds occasionally. Yeah, right? but for somebody, that might be the only mildly funny thing that they have seen all day, and that is what you have to bear in mind. When it comes to people, that might be the only interaction that they have that day. It's a day. sad indictment on society then, isn't it? Not necessarily, because some people stay inside out of choice. I know that I did. Well, you know? I wish I fucking could. Because, I'd <laughs> honestly, I'm I'm getting to the stage now where I'm going to have a panic attack if I have to go out the house. I can't be doing with it. There's nothing out there for me anymore. <laughs> nothing. There's only what misery. McDonald's? I, no, you can get it delivered. Bad for you, anyway. And since they've put... Can I just say, on talking of McDonald's, firstly, they've changed the fucking buns and they've started putting cooked onions on these burgers now. They're fucking awful. The burger just stinks of fucking onions. Disgusting. Absolutely foul. I'm sure you, you've already brought... Foul, this right, twi- right. This is twice right. now. Right, well, I've got a new point up. to make, right? Right. For a few weeks ago, their burgers got smaller. Nobody said anything. I've not heard anybody say this. I've not seen anybody put this in writing. Cheeseburgers, hamburgers, double cheeseburgers, mayo chickens, they've all gotten smaller. How do you know? Because they weren't as big as they were last time. Now, listen, I have McDonald's three or four times a week, usually in the middle of the night. When do I'm, you? Yeah, when I'm needing sucker. <gasps> yeah. So what, what's what's with the shocked sound? You were disgusted when I had it that time. Because you're diabetic. Of course I'm disgusted. You're not supposed to be having anything. You're diabetic. I'm not diabetic. You've seen my my blood sugar level was lower than a normal person's five minutes after I had a banana milkshake. Do you remember that time when you took my blood sugar level? Yeah, I do actually. Straight after I'd had a banana milkshake. Nothing. So I can do. I'm entitled. And I'm out there working in the pissing rain and the freezing cold at night... And sometimes I need a coffee and a, a double cheeseburger. Oh, yeah, you know, I don't have, like, full meals or anything like that. But, right, but wow. they've, they've got smaller over can recent... I just, what? Can I just say, can I just point out the fact that you seem angrier that the burgers have got smaller yeah. than you were when Hugh Edwards only got a suspended sentence? Well... Let that, let that sink in. Well, yeah, because I'm not paying for Hugh Edwards to go to jail. That's... That's I'm the not. angriest I've heard you. I'm I'm paying for I'm paying good money for McDonald's burgers to get smaller for some reason. I just laughed and scoffed when Hugh Edwards got off with it. Well, pretty much got off with it because 
That's what happens when you're rich and famous. And I'm trying to have a rather intelligent conversation regarding parasocial relationships, yeah. and you've just totally put it on a tangent about the size of fucking there's, burgers. There's nothing intelligent as far as social media is concerned. It's full of fucking goons, zooms, and idiots. Be sure to follow me on TikTok, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for listening to the podcast, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, I, anyway, I forgot what we were talking about now, but you're all wankers. What is the matter with you? I just think this whole thing is pointless. I'm having an existential crisis. You're telling me? Well, you're dragging me into one What's and all. What's the point of in? any of it? You do realise that we're right now we're recording a podcast where we're trying to encourage people to listen to us. I know, and you're but I don't know everyone a wanker. I, don't, I don't know why they bother. Seriously, <laughs> we're nobody. I've just had enough of it. Oh, you're in jail. I can tell. Just had enough. What are we doing this for? It's costing us money to make this podcast. Yeah, true. And I can't even set up a GoFundMe where people donate a pound. No one's going to fucking donate to you, you grumpy bastard. Why not? Well, Why they, would they? They should do. I wouldn't pay a quid to listen to this shit that you've just rambled on about. <laughs> All you've done is slag people off for using social media, which is the well, exact source that we use to get people to listen no, to No, I only do it because I I was dragged into it by you, wasn't Sorry? I? Sorry? I was dragged, dragged into, into it. Yeah. I didn't know you were TikTok famous, did I? So I have to, I have to join the club now. And anyway... The only decent viewing figures you get usually is when I'm on there, on your Hello. account. Your, your account will be Lauren and Andrew soon. It will not. It will not. The You've got your going. own. People just love a grumpy bastard, what can I say? Mm, well, the world will fucking love this podcast then. They're going to hate this podcast, Wouldn't I'll they? tell you now. This is going to get more down reviews than any other that we've ever had. More down reviews? You know, the thumbs down thing. Is it? Well, fuck Yeah. They can, <laughs> they can turn that thumb round and shove it right up their arse. Good luck I'm editing concerned. this, by the way, yeah, and making this leave sound like in. a decent... But don't! I'm just going to leave it all in. We Fuck cannot. We'll get, right, I've got some emails to do. We've okay. been inundated with some interesting emails this month. Have we? Yeah. Uh, first one is from Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Hello. Uh, she says, uh, I came across your email contact prior to a private search while in need of your assistance. My name is Aisha Gaddafi, a single mother and a widow with three children, I am the only biological daughter of late Libyan President, late Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. I have investment funds worth US$27,500,000 and I need a trusted investment manager because of my current refugee status. So she, she wants the Double Chinwag podcast to, to help her. So that's uh, Mrs Gaddafi. There. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, this, <laughs> we'll get that. Yeah. This one's from Michael. It okay. uh, says, uh, Greetings. I know that this message will come to you as a surprise, as we have never met before, but need not to worry. I am contacting you for a business that will be of great benefit for both of us. I need your urgent assistance in transferring the sum of $11.3 million to your private account. The money has been here in our bank lying dormant for years. So, so there's another, <laughs> another fascinating business proposal from Michael there. Once, Thank you, Michael. <laughs> once help from the Double Chin Mag podcast. Uh, we've got another one from Kate. Hello, Kate. Okay. Kate uh, Higgins, I think it is, yeah. Okay. Kate Higgins says, I sent it, question mark. <laughs> that's, that's the whole email. Okay. So thanks for that, Kate. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, Jenny, Jenny Peace has emailed us. Okay. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago to say, uh, first up, well done both of you for making the most entertaining podcasts. I absolutely love them. Also, oh. yours is a podcast that I always make sure I listen to through headphones, though people must wonder <laughs> why I'm snorting with laughter. The only other time I've been caught out regards headphones was on a pack train while I was listening to a true crime podcast. Thought my headphones had stopped working, so proceeded to turn them up as loud as possible. It was only then when I realised they weren't plugged in and that everyone else in the carriage heard the words, I have been sodomised on a regular basis. <laughs> it wasn't one of my finer moments. Anyway, keep it up. You're very funny individually and even funnier together. Jenny Peace. So thank oh, you for that, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. It's very nice. And uh, we have one here from Jelima Wind. who right. says, good morning. I hope this my message finds you in good health. <laughs> I got your details on the internet during a serious search for a trustworthy personality. I'm Jelima Wind. I am 23 years old. 
and I am the granddaughter of Fode Sanco, the rebel leader of Sierra Leone, <laughs> which opposes the government of former President Ahmad Tejan Keba. I have been a refugee. I'm currently in Porto Novo, Benin, due to political war in my country. My father decided to deport me because I am only child, and I lost my father on 11 25 23. During the war, my late father made a fortune selling diamonds to the tune of $10.2 million. This money was kept in secret. I cannot invest these funds alone, so I am asking for your help. There you go. I can't believe that these so that's, so that's another relative of a dictator asking if we'd like to. So I don't know what it is about this podcast that's... We're quite popular with um, with these... Yeah, descendants of dictators, African aren't we? And Asian dictatorships, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's quite good. So thank you very much. Keep those coming in. Any more business maybe we proposals? Appear, maybe we appear quite trustworthy. Maybe we do. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure how we would go about embezzling or laundering millions of dollars, though, really, via the podcast. There'll, no, there'll, but there'll be a YouTube tutorial on it, won't there? Probably, yeah. So there you go, so... so. We could have a look on that. So they're serious of the only comments we got. That's that's it, yeah. I mean, the podcast's still doing, doing well. Still getting lots of people listening every week. Who oh, are we? Yeah, so that's good to, to to the old episodes. So that's that's very good. But oh, you know, it obviously it's mainly relatives of deposed presidents of banana republics. Well, yeah, but you know, a listener's a listener, mm. isn't it? Oh, I've got a message here actually. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is from uh, this is from Lisa Stevenson. I've just found it mm. in the uh, message request. She's put, "Hi, I'm so glad that I found your new profile about a week or two ago. I've spent my whole time rewatching all of your videos, and then you mentioned the nursery nurse again. I had lost hers, so I've rewatched all of hers. Laughing face. I'm now obsessed with gardening too. Anyway, so I was watching your videos last night. You guys are hilarious." And then I fell asleep and dreamt about you and Mr. Lauren. Mm. So I have to tell you before I forget. Are you ready for this? Oh, this is, is this going to be, mm, well. I know. Are we going to have a menage a trois with Lee Absolutely Stevenson? Absolutely not. <laughs> right. You were filming a Christmas advert for TV. It was in London and it was you getting ready. And then you were wearing like a golden dress. Then you went to a place called The Office but it was actually a really swanky hotel um, where you had to go to the reception and ask for Mr. Lauren, who us, the viewers, could already see was sat in the back. This is this is horn dog stuff, this. What is going to happen? Then he moved out of the way when he, saw, uh, when he saw you and the concierge was like, he's right over this way. And then it turned into like a musical of him handing you Oh, her handing you to him and all the guests danced and moved <laughs> and cleared the ballroom dance floor. And then you two which <laughs> were just in the centre and had to slow dance, both laughing your heads off. And then I woke up because I needed a wee. I just thought I'd share. I can't wait to listen to the podcast. I'm still a month behind on videos at the moment. Thank you very much for that, Lisa. What in the name of fucking hell was all that about? <laughs> Sounds like a John Lewis Christmas advert if they had no budget. <laughs> what? But yeah, that's thank you for that, Lisa. I've only literally only just seen that now, and you sent that in May. <laughs> so thank oh, you. Oh right, yeah. Oh, so up to date then. Yeah. So we're um, yeah all up to date now with everything. With the uh, I mean, descendants of dictators and Lisa Stevenson. Does, I mean, you, firstly, you'd never be seen dead in a swanky London hotel. Oh, would I would. You? you just you wouldn't take me. Well, I probably wouldn't. To be fair, I probably exactly. wouldn't waste my time or no. money, no. which is a sad, which is a sad realization for me. Because if you, you, if I can't take you to posh places, that means I'll never go to posh places. Well, you, you can you can take me, just take me to McDonald's afterwards or something like that, because you know that the food's not going to be up to scratch. What do you mean? It's going to be the best food money can buy. Yeah, but they do such, like, dinky little portions. I know, but that's the way... Yeah, but not everybody is an overeater like us two, are they? Yeah, this is why I wonder if... most people are thin, is because they don't eat the amount of shit that you and I eat. Yeah, but I just want to feel fed. 
yeah, I know, but it doesn't, doesn't work like that. People people go around, well, I presume that most people who are thin go around just being hungry most of the time, well, but having more willpower yeah. than us. But still, I mean, you can take me. Hey, mm. I've, it, when we go on this cruise, I've got nice dresses to wear, you know. Yeah, but it's a P&O cruise. Don't matter. I've it's got nice like dresses to wear. the weather spins of cruises. Doesn't matter. Isn't I've got na- Yeah, but we were told, weren't we, start at the bottom and work your way up. If you go in at the top, then you'll never be happy. Yeah. I, so we're, that's I don't doing. want to be wearing a jacket every night on the Cunard ones because it's not really You have me. to buy one first. Well, I know. I've got loads of jackets here, but none of them fit. I'll just wear the dress out on the veranda then. Yeah, that'll be fine. Look good in the gales and rain, won't it? Yeah. No, it'll be like, it'll be really romantic. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to think of, I'll have to think of some videos to do, but you can't wait. Looking forward to that. Was well, I'm actually I'm looking forward to the holiday not because it's a holiday and I get to spend two weeks with you just because I'm sick of fucking work at the minute I'm sick Brilliant. of being on the treadmill do you know what I mean Brilliant. I just so I just need some time off doesn't matter where it is where I'm going or who with I just need some time off you my friend are a fucking charmer aren't I you I know the old silver Absolutely. tongue what's it yeah you really are I know. I'm just looking forward to spending two weeks with you. You are. This you is know. A, no, you're not, because you spent, well, fuck well, you. you spent, as we've discussed before, you spent months moaning and complaining that you didn't know, you know, it was going to be like a, it was going to be like um, a, a Heat magazine make or break holiday for minor celebrities, this no. this thing, because you didn't know whether you'd be able to put me for two weeks. I didn't complain or anything like that. I just said it would be interesting to see how I handle spending that amount mm. of time with one person. Yeah. That's all. Not because it is specific to you, you knobhead. I never said that. I just said, you know, because I'm used to being on my own a lot. And it's been literally years since I spent a decent amount of time. In fact, I've never had a holiday for two weeks, let alone a holiday with just one person for two weeks. Mm. So it will just be interesting to see. Um, that I think that there's going to be that much to do that I'm going to absolutely love it. I am going to anyway because it's a holiday and I'm not working. But you just thought, oh, it's just you complaining about me. No, it's not. not well, it was a very introspective navel-gazing, wasn't it? How am, how am I going to cope with somebody else? You know, it was very kind of self-analytical wasn't it? And not not a thought given to me who's got to spend a fortnight with you. Yeah, you know? but that's when that's when the conversation starts and then you give your perspective of something, isn't it? Well I was I was very optimistic and quite cheery about it. Fuck off. When have you ever I was. I when thought, have you I said ever to you it, it will you, be no problem. No. We get on no. very well, usually, apart from the minor bickering. On podcasts. Yeah. And you know you put you. Up, you put you put up with my smelly ass. I put up with you making disgusting noises. Andrew, how long have I known you now? About about eighteen months. Well, the second time around, yeah. 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 Okay. No point in that time have you ever even come close to being cheery. So don't give me that shit. Of course I have. When the, when that day that fella over the road from you died. I was fucking made up. That's that was dirty, Derek, and you can't say that. Well, I just have done, and it's fucking staying in. <laughs> You're not a cheery sort of person, so don't give me that so, shit that you. Well, all right. Know. Well, I wasn't pessimistic about spending. The I wasn't with you pessimistic. Recently. I was just saying. I wonder in future. I'll keep my thoughts inside my head. Yes, I didn't realise do. that you were one of those people that's just so insecure that anything I come out with, you're like, oh, get over it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Me being insecure. Well, clearly, because you were taking it as a criticism, I was just wondering. Well, I just how I just, it would just, be. I thought we were obviously on different pages in this relationship because I didn't think it would be a problem. I never said it. Oh, um, when when is it? When do you get you? Is it tomorrow? Well, it will be now at this rate because you're getting on. Yeah, well, week. I'm going to deck you mm. when you get here. Well, you can keep telling your lies. To try to, <gasps> to try to sound not not as terrible as it actually was, it was actually right. it was actually very hurtful. You can fuck off. You time. can fuck all the you know. way off. Don't be it playing that card with me. Full listener, you know, I was I was quite vulnerable at the time, and you you only, and you not felt you know, hurt just yet. She said you she have said not to me. Do you know right? Do you know what I'm going to do? Do you know Martin. what I'm going to do? You left some crisps. You left some crisps on the side, and I've not touched them. I'm fucking scoffing. You are them joking. After this. I don't believe that. Bastard. I thought you'd be f- honestly. Them. I've not touched them. 
No, I've not touched them. Jesus Christ. You must have had some in. Not then. touched them. No, I've not had any crisps then. You can pay. I'm going to scoff them now. Oh, you're welcome to them. Shite, anyway. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. I want to talk about or ask you what you know about Diddy. Did he ever invite you to one of his parties? Diddy. The only thing I know about Diddy's is that uh, Ken Dodd had some dancers called the Diddy. No, Man. no, come that's, on. That's all I know. I no. mean P. Diddy, come on. Right, Puff Doddy. I've never, I have to say, I've never been to one of Puff Diddy's parties. He's P. Diddy. Well, he keeps changing it. First he was no, Puffy. he was Puff Daddy. Then he was then Puff Diddy. Diddy. Now he's P. Daddy. I can't fucking keep up with the fucker. He's not P. Daddy. He's now he's P. just going to be a number uh, yeah, exactly. in a prison cell somewhere. <laughs> anyway, no, I've never been to one of his parties, Kel Surprise. But, listen, no. all, all I know about this is, right, that when you've got as much money as he has and you've mm. got fuck all to do, because you don't have to get up and go to work every day, right? Then you can do whatever you want, can't you? Then you can Sounds indulge like in your hobbies and your interests and things like that. And when you've got as much money as he has, you can do that times a million. So if you like getting pissed, you can get pissed on Cristal Champagne at, you know, three grand a bottle. If you like taking drugs, you can have the finest Colombian fucking drug lords supplying you, can't you? If you like shagging then you can have your house full of hoes and bitches and swap them round every week and do all that. But to do all that, to have a, a large quantity of drugs delivered every week to your house, for example, people are going to start noticing. That involves a lot of people, doesn't it, an organisation, and somebody's going to notice it. If you're having uh, you know, a merry-go-round of bitches and hoes delivered to your house Sorry. every week... Bitches right. and hoes. Yeah, well, that's how he'd, that's what he'd call them. Mm. But then, you know, I'm just being accurate. Then It just doesn't sound right coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. No, well, it won't do. But, you know, if if you've got these hooty mamas coming round to your house every week, that's called organised crime, human trafficking, sex slavery. Isn't well, yeah, because some of it was was young young men, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm sure there were plenty of women as well. I've seen women on the news this week accusing him of, of, of raping them you know, as far back as 20-odd years ago. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me that this stuff goes on because they've too much money, they've not enough to do, and you can mm. indulge in your hobbies to the, the nth degree, can't you? To whatever will... whatever degree you want to expand your hobbies, shagging and drinking, etc., because that's what men like to do, apparently. Then you can do that to, to, to your heart's content. It will be interesting to to see the associations, like friendships that he's got. Who's gonna get Who's gonna get dragged down with him? Because mm. he was very close to Jay Z, wasn't he? Who's obviously Beyonce's husband. We all know he's a crank, anyway, don't we? That Jay Z. Yeah, I mean, well, well, you know. uh, well, apparently the the Beehive. These are the people that support Beyonce. Can't stand Jay Z. No, well, because I so, mean, first of all, he's cheated on her. Why you do that? I don't know. For, exactly, for it's Beyonce for fuck's sake. And then her sister was twatting him in a lift or something. Yeah. So he's obviously been up to no good there. Yeah. So he, he's a crank anyway, but apparently Pink, she's deleted a whole Twitter history this week since this Has news she? came out, yeah, and some other arsehole that I've never heard of before. So it might be that... Um, and people are bringing up that John Legend's wife as well. Um, Who's that? That Chrissy What's-Her-Face. Oh, she's a bit know. of a po face midget. But, um, yeah, the people are bringing her up and him and saying he's a bit of a one of them as well. So, What about Justin Bieber? Well, I don't know. I think he's too young, really. To I think, if anything, he's been exploited. Well this, is the, well, this is the whole thing about it, because for anyone who's unaware, you know, like, they have, like, little protégés and that, don't they? Mm. Well, Usher, Usher was P. Diddy's protégé. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, Justin Bieber was Usher's protégé. Right. And apparently there's is like this footage of like a fifteen year old Justin Bieber going to like these these sex fest parties or whatever it is that they're mm. called. Mm. And, you know, there's he he did he's done a few songs that are, there's one particular called Lonely, where people have often wondered if it's to do with obviously him being young and being exploited and stuff like that. So it well because he's obviously at times he's been quite troubled, you know. With um, but then again, he's he's famous, isn't he? So mm. there's going to be all sorts happening in that head. But it will just be interesting to find out what happens from this. I think P Diddy's going to end up not here anymore. 
I think something's going to happen either at his own hands or somebody else's. Oh, so you're but now I, you're the conspiracy theorist. I am. I think it's going to be an Epstein sort of thing. Oh, I really right. do. So you believe that conspiracy, yeah. do you? I don't know enough about it to. I mean, Epstein sort of thing, like just oh, is is just is just dead. Yeah, well, the conspiracy you know, was, was that he was killed, not that he killed himself. Oh well, I don't. I, I'm not saying you know whether he's going to be killed or be killed, mm. you know, or do it to himself, whatever. But I think that that's that's the road that this is going to go down. I think it's going to be a case of he's going to have absolutely nothing because I think it's going to be it's going to be one of those things where you're either with him or you're against him, and no one could be seen to be with him. So again, everything's going to come out. I think, and people are going to be dropping all sorts of information just so that they're not associated yeah. with him. I'm not so actions. sure. I don't know. I think. Uh, oh, there obviously will be people that we like and admire that will be involved in this, just like there were with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. But that hasn't come out. You know, that information, or that information has come out, but it's not been picked up, you might say, suppressed by the mainstream yeah. media. Yeah, someone's, you know, someone's very rich from the information of that, aren't they, suppressing all of this information? Yeah, so I think it'll be another case of that. But, you know, it's been going on for years. I mean, R. Kelly's in prison for the same thing, isn't he? And they all would be. I know, as I've said to you before, there's a man who's died recently, an actor who was an acquaintance of mine, and he told me stories about people, and as well, a certain actor on which I won't name on this podcast because I will be sued, and told me that he, he lied in court for him. Wow. About what, what had gone on many, many years ago in certain circumstances, which, again, I won't mention because I'll get sued. And, <laughs> um, you know, some of these things go on. Uh, it's it's it always it always has to. You're not telling me that bands in the 70s and 80s or whenever, or even these days, you know, members of bands are checking fucking driving licenses of girls that are appearing, you know. Yeah. They're not doing, are they? No, it just, I don't know. I think some I don't like to look too much into all of this stuff if I'm if I'm totally honest because I like to say you always say you, I remember you saying to me once well, I wonder what it's like is it what's it like in your head is it all just full of unicorns and butterflies and mm. stuff and a lot of the times it is it's but it's out of choice I can't get I can't get invested in this sort of things because I I truly just lose all sense of of humanity and it's important to me to keep it so I try and. I try and stay out of, you know, that sort of information as best I can. But obviously, if it's all over everywhere in the media, you, you can't help it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try not and get too um, in-depth with it. Well, because you'll just end up like me, a realist. You think I'm miserable and grumpy, right? But it's people that have made me like this because I know what people are like. Because yeah. I can't, I, I understand I've either been in that situation or I've seen it firsthand or I know about it. And I I do let it get to me. I can't go around with my head in the clouds pretending everything's all right like some people can. I'm, yeah. I am a realist, and this is why I am, you know, this haggard, cynical husk of a fucking man. Because, <laughs> well, maybe that's you know. that's why we work so well together, though. Yeah, yeah, you know. maybe that's why we're always bickering. We don't bicker that much. It, no. I mean, when you think when you think about it, we actually, I know a lot of people will think that we do, mm. and you know, I, I get it, especially. And I've said it before: is that a, lot, a few people have said, "How can you deal with him being so moody and stuff like that?" And they they're not they're not taking into account that you're seeing a sixty second clip out of a full weekend together. But and I, I think in in that respect, it's it's very much opposite to track because you know you you are you are grumpy sometimes, not all the time. But, you know, you are grumpy. But then also I find you to be quite educational as well. I learn a lot from you. And I think one of your... Because, like I say, I, by choice, stick my head in the clouds a lot of the time or stick my head in the sand, whichever one you want to say. You've definitely got the knack of sort of instilling information in a way that's sort of bite-sized, shall we say. You're like the GCSE. Am I? <laughs> yeah, of stuff that's happening in the world. You just offer it in bite-sized information. Oh. Just taking out all the bullshit and then just letting me know what I need to know or, you know, if I if I ask certain questions about mm. something. Um, and I, I love that about you. I think that's something that works really well between us, you know. Well, it saves you having to educate yourself. Well, exactly, yeah. Doesn't it? He said exactly. rather bitingly. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm somebody who's maybe a little bit more optimistic for you. Yeah. Because could you imagine two of you or two of me? It wouldn't work. I'd be great. I'd love. I'd love to be in a relationship with somebody as grumpy and cynical as me. I wouldn't yeah, have to would make any effort then, would I? I'm telling you now, it's fucking exhausting. So careful. You know, I wouldn't have to make any effort. You know, to, you know, somebody who was completely on my wavelength. It sounds like a very boring life, though. Yeah, but I like my life being boring. I I wouldn't leave <laughs> my house if I didn't have to. When you say, you know, you always say to me. 
you know, you know, we can go and do stuff you want to do as well, you know, and and mm. we do that occasionally, and you begrudgingly come along, don't you? When um, have I? Sorry, when have I ever begrudgingly come along? You're chatting shit I think there, you do, though. kind sir. I think you do. I think you're very good at masking it, but I think you do. But any, because we usually do what you want to do, and that's fine with me because there isn't anything I want to do at all. But I, think I just it's want to be left that alone. I offer. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, and that's fine. And occasionally, like we're going to see Paul Carrick next week. Yeah, we are. I will do that. That's fine. But most of the time, I just want to be left to sit in my chair and rot. So, but you also just... said that if it wasn't for me, you would just be sat in your chair and. and I would rotting. be. Yeah, which is part of the reason I resent you so much. <laughs> Because you cost me money and effort. Yeah, but what a life, eh? Oh, yeah, it's fucking ace. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? I've now got three hours of editing to do on this podcast. Yeah, well, you that's know. only because you said so much stuff that you're not allowed to say. I'm leaving it all in. Right, well, thanks very much for listening. Although, why are you bothering? I don't know, because we're just two no marks off the social <laughs> medias. But we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you after Christmas, probably, for another one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.